The seasoning of our food is a significant aspect of dining experience. In this respect, the salt and pepper shaker plays an important role. The question that often arises: um, Which shaker should have more holes, uh, the salt or the pepper? Let's find out with PAA. Hey, I'm Shoji Lo. Welcome to What People Also Ask, where I answer some of the most Google questions with even more Googling. Today's question is which shaker should have more holes, the salt or the paper? The answer is not as straightforward as you might think. It depends on a variety of factors such as cultural norm, health consideration, and personal preferences. So let's explore all of these considerations one by one. Cultural practice and historical consideration. Historically, salt has been a crucial ingredient, enhancing flavors and preserving food. Its importance dates back to the prehistorical times, with the production traced back to 450 BC in China. Pepper, on the other hand, originating from India, has been exported for about 4,000 years. Before shakers and grinders, pepper was prepared using a mortar and pestle. The origin of the salt and pepper shaker is attributed to John Mason in the mid 1800s, but it only became widespread in the 1920s. This was after Morton introduced magnesium carbonate to salt, ensuring a more free-flowing pool. Of the salt. Before this, salt was kept in cellars and broken into clumps and kept in bowls with spoon. This introduction of magnesium carbonate revolutionized salt storage and usage. This is why Morton Salt Company later adopted the slogan: "When it rains, it pours," meaning that its salt containing magnesium carbonate would not stick together in humid weather. A ceramic become more common. The design and popularity of shaker evolved, turned them into collectible and souvenir. The Smithsonian highlights that most of salt shaker have one hole, while paper shaker have two or three. The Great Depression boosted the popularity of these shakers due to their affordability. The pairing of salt and papers, despite their distinct flavors and uses, led to them being marketed together. However, it's essential to differentiate between a paper shaker and a paper mill or grinder. Modern times have seen the evolution of shakers. With electric paper mills and specialty salt shaker emerging, there is even a museum in Tennessee dedicated to salt and paper shakers, showcasing over 20,000 pairs of different type of salt and paper shakers. These shakers, while functional, also serve as nostalgic relic and souvenir, and their future remains promising as they continue to hold a sentimental value on dining tables. Contrary to public belief, the number of holes in shakers is not universally standardized and vary greatly based on cultural practice and historical reasons. For instance, salt shakers gradually have fewer holes. Well, the, this practice is influenced by health trends advocating for lower sodium intake. On the other hand, in parts of Europe, it's not uncommon to find paper shakers with fewer holes, a practice rooted in historical times when paper was considered a valuable commodity, so you don't want to use too much of it. So, how about a health consideration that? Talk about our next part. Health consideration: Can fewer holes in a salt shaker reduce how much salt we use? Health consciousness can significantly impact the design and usage of salt and paper shaker. As awareness grows regarding the health risk of excessive salt consumption, such as high blood pressure and heart disease, many people are making efforts to reduce their sodium intake. The shift in health awareness has led to the design of salt shaker with fewer holes, especially in health-conscious society like the U.S. However, when it comes to the controlling salt intake, the size of the holes a salt shaker has might have a bigger impact compared to the numbers of holes. A study conducted by Greenfield H. Smith A. M. and Well R. B. published in Human Nutrition Applied Nutrition on 1948 provides valuable insight into this topic. The research involved 2,241 Australian adults who consumed many meals at a cafeteria. The salt shaker, both single hold and multi hold, with five nine thirteen holes, were weighted before and after use. The finding revealed that for hold numbers, salt usage increased linearly with an increase in hold area. Interestingly, for a given hold area, multi hold shaker result in decreased salt use compared to single hold shakers. This suggests that multi-hole shakers offer consumer better control over salt dispensing. I mean, accidentally putting too much salt into your food is the worst of the both worlds, 'cause then you will not only ingest too much sodium, but also we're not enjoying it. However, the most significant reduction in salt use amount to 0.37 gram per meal was achieved using a single hole shaker with a hole area of 3 millimeter square. So, if you want to reduce your salt intake, remember that hole size of shakers should also be taken into account. Let's look to our next consideration. 
Brand size and practicality consideration. Another essential factor to consider is the size of the texture of the salt and the paper grains. Some salt and paper are coarse, while others are very fine, which impacts how easily they pour from the shakers. The practicality of usage tends to outweigh traditional norm in this case. Larger, coarser grains require larger holes to dispense properly, irrespective of whether it's salt or paper. That leads to our next point, personal preferences consideration. Obviously, personal preferences play a crucial role. The best advice is to match your shaker's hole size with the type of salt or paper you are using to get your desired result. For instance, if you prefer using coarse Himalayan pink salt or cracked black pepper, you might need to modify your shakers to have larger holes. Your salt and paper shakers should serve your needs first and foremost, making your seasoning experience as smooth and enjoyable as possible. So here's my conclusion. The number of holes in your salt and paper shakers should depend on your individual taste, health considerations, and specific type of salt or pepper you are using. So if you made it to the end of the video, chances are that you enjoy learning what people also ask on Google. But let's face it, reading PAA yourself will be a pen. So here's the deal. I will do a reading for you and upload one from PAA once a week. All you have to do is to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you won't miss any PAA report that I compiled. So just do it right now.